Hey everybody, welcome to the sewer. I'm Nick the Rat. It's currently Monday, 6-13-2016, in the evening. It's Nick the Rat, live from the sewer! Whoa! I, bro- I broke the microphone. I'm so excited. This is episode 27. The government almost got us last week. They cut my incoming line on me. You might have noticed that. I was talking to myself a a little embarrassing, but not embarrassing enough for me to not continue on with the show. The show must go on. This is is a circus. It's a one-man circus, everybody. And and nobody's going to stop me, big or small, or any of that. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. You can't stop me. I'm there. I just go through things like radiation. Oh, man. There's a lot of things in life that get radiated, mostly from the sun. The sun is the cause of radiation for most of us down on the Earth. I would say that's true. I don't know. I think the sun probably gives more radiation off than the cell tower on your roof, currently shooting people's conversations through your skull while you're just sitting there trying to read some Playboy, and they're going into your skull. With without your consent too, it's it's really subversive, sub- subversive radio stations. That's what I'm saying. Hello, hello, hello. Analog modulation with subversive radio stations. stations a holdover from the cold war it's still very much alive and transmitting in britain a man who tore himself away from his high-tech computer and tuned into his low-tech shortwave radio stumbled upon an entire universe of radio stations that the public is not supposed to hear or even know about they're called number stations a holdover from the cold war it's still very much alive and transmitting in britain a man who tore himself away from his high-tech computer and tuned into his low-tech I thought I told you one time, I'll tell you 16 times. Stop blasting that monkey bullshit up from the sewer. You're trampling my HS signal down in Mexico. I can't get my slave labor coats made. I can't get my signal down there because you're trampling my motherfucking signal. I can hear that shit coming up through the... Monday, everybody. Let the, the vibes go through you. Or into your, your ears, into your skull, your brain. Brain. Simpson. No. Rat. Simpson, eh? No. Rat. Mr. Simpson. No. Nick the Rat. Thank you. Shut up.
pushing out those those beats. You can play these numbers and win the lottery. Good friend Blitz told me that one. He's, he's got numbers. Subversive radio stations, 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 subversive radio stations. Whoa, whoa. Subversive radio stations, right there. By the. That's by analog modulation. Subversive radio stations, they're, they're pretty subversive, especially when you can't change what you're listening to and they just come into you and you don't know what they're about, but they're hitting you. Uh, it's weird. I think that it might be the one thing that the X-Files has never touched on that I know about. I don't know. Maybe they did. I I started watching them from uh, on net on the Netflix. I got one of those uh, uh, fat tubes coming down to the sewer. Don't tell Verizon. Uh, but I've been watching the X Files, and uh, I don't think they did a number stations episode yet. I just finished the uh, the, 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 the sea creature in the hotel. That's weird. The sea creature in the hotel. They did it though. It was, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, yeah. So. Oh, man, we're coming up on the 6 o'clock hour. Uh, coming to you live from Brooklyn, New York. We got the the, the sewers are jumping and pumping and uh, doing its thing. It's almost 6 o'clock. I don't think it really matters to anybody anyway. Because you're not listening to this live. You might be listening to it recorded tomorrow. So I'm talking about, like, hours ago. You totally missed six o'clock. But anyway, back to back to the X Files. We have a. I found th- these clips of David Duchovny talking, and I found this one to be kind of interesting. I don't know why I found it interesting, but I, I did. And uh, right after the six o'clock hour, I'm going to play it for you. You're going to get to hear some old school David Duchovny talking to you live, come to you live from the sewer. Well, it's, this is not even live either because this is from years ago. He sounds like a chipmunk, he actually. (sighs) Oh, David. Oh, it's six o'clock! Okay, let's put on the David. I don't know. (laughs) I think that it came at the right time, and it was a good show. Oh, yeah, he's he's talking about... This this clip has to be, like, altered. He sounds way too chipmunky. But anyway, he's talking about the the start of X-Files and stuff like that. It's interesting. Here, listen on. And it was about something that the other shows weren't about. It's not a doctor drama. And as good as ER is, that's all it is. It's not a cop drama. As great as NYPD Blue is, as great as Law & Order, our Emmy-winning show is, these are cop dramas. X-Files is something completely different. It has a little bit of both. It has a little cops, it has a little medicine, and it has a little soap opera, and it has a lot of scary stuff. 
it's just a really good show that happened to come across the screen at a time when aliens were hip. What are you talking about, David? Aliens were always hip. Come on, man. I hope you're not really like the guy from Californication. I'd rather you be more like uh, a scary, scary molder than that jerk douchey guy. But you're probably more like the jerk douchey guy, personally speaking. I don't know. Maybe you're a nice guy, David. Uh, I take it all back. Uh, the most annoying part about the X-Files... Sorry I'm getting into that so much. I've just, just seen a lot of it lately. Uh, the, the Scully. She pisses me off so much on that show. We're, uh, I think I'm on like season seven. And uh, Scully's been abducted by aliens. She's been probed. She's been shift shafted. Talked to dead people. Sore Bigfoot. And God. Uh, uh, shit's happened to Scully. She's seen stuff. And Mulder has always been right. Always been right. All right, so then tell me why I'm up to season seven or eight or whatever, and she's still questioning him. He, he says something out there, and she's like, Well, Mulder, well, you don't know. We didn't get to the science. Mulder. Shut up, Scully. Scully, come on. Listen, if Mulder told you something, it's probably true. We're going to happen to you. You shouldn't. you seen it. You've seen it, you lived it, just like Andy K and Matmo did with uh, K and Neo. This is a, a remix of the X-Files theme. Yeah, yeah remixes, baby. Ooh. That's modulating. Uh, bring that down. There we go. This is the X-Files theme remix. Listen to it. No, you listen to me. No, you listen to this. Excellent. Hey, Nick Rat. My name is Slater. I'm from the future. And I'm traveled back in time. Stop with reflection. Now it's Scully and uh, Mulder in the dance party. Mulder, you're crazy. You're crazy. Abducted by aliens. I shall make it the focus of my remaining years that your dreams will go unfulfilled. Oh, well, that was uh, Andy and K and Matmo, or maybe it was K and Neo. 
I don't know. If you look up K and Neo X Files theme 2015 uh, radio edit, you'll find you'll find that little uh, uh, little little song right there. Uh, so at Nick the Rat Radio, we have a phone line here. You could call in. You could leave voicemails. You could uh, tell me things. Most people tell me good things. Uh, voicemail number. Well, the voice number. The call. The call-ins might not be working totally right now. They might be. I don't know. Uh, it's 917-719-5923. Uh, let's play... Let's play a voicemail. Um, oh, boy. Cross your fingers, everybody. Nikki. I hope you've taken care of that little problem we were talking about. Uh, I don't want to have to call you again, Nikki. What? Remember last time we talked? Hmm? I didn't like what I had to do. What? Take care of it. You talking about the sprinkles? Man, I, I've been laying off the sprinkles, okay? So, you don't want to come, you don't want to come around my neighborhood and tell me about sprinkles, because that's not going to work. And if it's not taken care of, maybe you could do some black magic. Apparently, that, uh, that happens sometimes. People do black magic. Uh, I was watching the news, and... There's this story of these people trying to get revenge by doing hexes. Yeah. And it's on the news, everybody. So now it's coming to you live from the sewer. Stanford rapist Brock Turner got off easy with his six-month jail sentence, but he still saw at least one severe punishment. A good old... I think the extreme public humiliation and everybody knowing who he is is going to be worse than... Well, he should have got probably worse than that, but but now he's gonna have to suffer with that. Like, who's who's not gonna be like, oh, it's that that rapist guy now? Whenever they see him, hopefully it's really hard for him to get a job and he locks himself up or something. But anyway, listen listen to what this group of people try to do. It's kind of entertaining, I guess. He's uh, uh, here. Listen, old fashioned hex. A self-identified witch organized a mass hexing for the former Stanford swimmer whose lenient sentence for raping an unconscious woman at a party sparked national outrage. Asshole. Melanie Elizabeth Hexen prepped for the cursed event on social media. You will need a solid black candle, his photo, a black string, and a spell I will share on Facebook. The oh my God! On Facebook. Several posted pictures of their household hexes, including pictures of Turner's mugshot going up in flames. The hex happened Tuesday night and include phrases like, Sleep will only bring nightmares and you will meet justice. Turner received his short sentence despite being convicted of felony rape and lying about his history of substance abuse to the yeah, judge. Well, yeah, that was, a, that was a daily news report right there. People... If anything's coming out of this that I like, it's the witches are coming back in full force. They're they're gonna they're gonna throw hexes down on everybody that deserves it. Justice will be served. There will be justice. The cool thing is, like back in the day, he would have got off, and all the girls that said they were witches doing this would have been hung and burned at the stake. Well, now they're on the news. It's kind of cool if you think about it. Uh, it's like hip to be a witch. Oh boy, that's like uh, Chris Dayman, the witch. This song right here.
All right, everybody. Let's make that hex come true. Let's all just think about that. Jerk off! Get him burnt to the stake! This bro culture gotta die. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> what is that? Da! Da! Mr. Burns, calm down! Da! Eureka! Uh -huh. Why are you in the sewer anyway? <coughs> what? Can you make me beautiful? Well, that's why you're here. Come here, Burns! I'll make you beautiful. Here, first, drink on this. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, The Witch. Hopefully that emphasizes the hex. And, oh, boy. It's a horrible story. Anyway, uh, back to the show. Uh, we got a phone line... 917-719-5923. Let's, uh, let's hear what uh, this person had to say over here. Hey, Rat, this is Kyle from Seattle, man, calling you from E for E. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, hey, bro, I just want to call in real quick, man. I saw what you did, like, last week on Twitter with uh, Cliffy B, man. Fuck that guy, man. He's a yeah. fucking douchebag, man. Hillary Clinton, I mean, really, bro? Fuck that shit, man. His games suck anyway, dude. Ooh. Yeah, I'm just going to go sit down, smoke some fucking weed, and play some Tetris, man. You take it easy. Hey, Kyle. Uh, uh, totally agreed. I have nothing against Cliffy B, though. His games have been not too as, well, you know, whatever, but... I'll talk to that, Kyle. Also, amazingly enough, um, Rainer brought me down to E3 earlier this week. You know, yesterday or whatever. Uh, and I had some reporting there. Let's see if I did. Is that where I had? Yeah, okay. Well, uh, let me, let me play that clip that I had saved from there. Hold on one second. Hey, this is Nick the Rat live from uh, E3. Uh, uh, just reporting on uh, some of the new game. Hey, don't step on me. Ow. Oh. Um. Oh, 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 these people just... Ah. Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, I saw a couple new games here. There's some good things, some bad things, some things that made me question life. But, uh, let's see. There was, uh, what was that new game coming out? It was the... The new uh, Sega, Sega game, they're trying to reinvent Sonic the Hedgehog again. Uh, I saw they were, uh, it's uh, called Sonic Joins Isis. It's probably going to be a big hit with all the kids. Uh, you have to just, boo, just speed through all the levels as usual in Sonic skill. And now he's, instead of the scarf, he's got, a, he's got that thing on his head. He's moved it on up. Uh, let's, oh, hey, watch out. Hey, get away. Spilling soda on me over here. This is not funny. This I'm the little guy over here. Uh, let's see. Apparently, in the Nintendo booth, there's uh, yeah, Nintendo's here magically. Uh, Mario makes a VR porn game. Oh my god, Mario is doing VR porn. Everybody, you put on the headset. I tried it out. He gets a plunger out and he like sticks it all in your butt. And he cleans you out. It's uh, it's he's like, hey, hey, watch where you're going. You, you so oh god. Ah. Ah, there's people coming out of these Pokemon freaks here, man. They're all over the place. Ah, and finally, uh, uh, other and big news that I saw, I went down to the Valve, uh, the Valve booth. They're not here either, I don't think, but magically they are today. And uh, apparently they're, they're saying that Half-Life 3 is officially announced, everybody. You could uh, pack your balls up and go home. Half-Life 3 is officially announced, coming out straight out of Game Newell's, but he's apparently also my cousin's best friend's sister, so I know Game Newell pretty good. I'm going to do an interview with him later, hopefully this month. Uh, that's uh, Nick the Rat reporting live from E3. Hey, Rainer! Rainer, get me out of here! They're trying to step on me. I don't think they like that. They have rats coming around here. 
anymore. It's gonna be ah! uh, Yeah, so that was my live reporting from E3. It was a little traumatic. Uh, Rainer got me there and got me out and on time, though. So, uh... Yeah, if you want to talk about video games or anything, I guess you could, uh... You could call in now or later, whenever you want to call in. Uh, the the number is 917-719-5... It's 917... Hold on, I need to... I need to clear my throat. Oh. Oh boy, that was good. Ah! 917-719-5923. You can call in here. <laughs> you can call in. After I play this song, Sonic the Hedgehog boss, boss theme. This is from the new game. Uh, good tunes. <laughs> Official. times. He used to be my favorite, but I think Mario is definitely coming up after that last VR port game. Woo! Oh, the princess is in my anus. Come on, Mario. This is the ghost of John F. Kennedy Jr. My ghost completely approves of the Nick the Rat podcast. Oh dear, heaven forfend. Everybody, smoke them if you got them. Smoke this year. Come here, Mr. Burns. 620. You got it. You got it. What blazes? Exactly. Blazes. You've made my day.
Say it. Say it. Sugar. Uh. Power up. What? I don't remember hearing that in, in Sonic's games. Maybe that's uh, it's coming from uh, the guy that made it. Uh, good tunes. Good job, good tunes. That was groovy. They should Sega should hire you, put you in their game. So oh, man, I I play again. Ah. Uh, well, we got a phone line, 917-719-5923. Call, and you can talk to me. You can leave voicemail. It's all good. Like this guy left a voicemail for us. Hello? Hello? I just crapped in my pants. Oh, no. I held you my hand. A good night for me. Really? My good guy recommended me to you, show. You sound like a sweet boy to me. Please call me back. Please. I'm not calling you back. Oh, it looks like we got a phone call coming in. Hold on, it's, uh, it's, let me see here. Is the line's up. Hello? Hello, it's, sir? Uh, Nick the Rat. This is uh, Nick the Rat. Call, you're calling me. Yeah, what? this is... Uh, there's Donnie Donuts over here. Hey, Donnie Donuts, what's going on? I've been... Hey, not much, man. I'm listening to your show, and uh, I'm a little confused. You got a problem with Cliffy B? Uh, if if Cliffy B knows the produce gangsters, I I I, I have no I have no problem I have no problem with them. Maybe. Oh no no no! I mean, uh, I'm I'm asking you. You know, if you have a problem, you know, we could take care of it. Ah. Uh... Uh, well, maybe I might have a little issue with Cliff- Cliffy B. If you could maybe uh, scope him at the grocery store for me. Yeah, that sounds uh, sounds good to me, man. Because you know, be honest with you, uh, I, I don't like the guy neither. You know what I mean? He's uh, his games are shitty. You oh. know who plays Gears of War, right? Uh, who, who, the, who the fuck is that? Giant shoulder pads, and knee high walls. It's good. Do you? Yeah. Stuck? Uh, it looks like shit. Well, did you see the new uh, Mario VR porn game? No, but I want to, man. What's what's that like? Oh, it's kind of like Mario Kart. You could select your character. I think Donkey Kong would probably be the most uh, uh, stimulating. He, it's got a barrel move. I don't know how it works. But uh, let's go back to Cliffy. Oh. What's What could you do to Cliffy B for me? Hey, whatever you want, man. You get the two for one special. You know what I'm saying? You know, you can get, you know, buy one, get two free. You know, uh, maybe uh, he can't walk anymore. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you want, man. So you're gonna put him? You're gonna strap him to a Segway? He's stuck. Yeah, I think I could probably go for that. that. What? We could do that too. We could do whatever you want, man. You want me to, you know, strap him up in front of a Mac? Sir, could you turn your radio down? Sir, can you turn? It sounds like your radio might be on. <laughs> the what? I'm sorry, sir. Uh, hey, you all right? This is Donnie. Listen, can can I go back to the grocery store now? Are you trying to say it's cool? Oh, there was never a problem with you, man. It was it was that other guy, that uh, Tommy Tomato, whatever the fuck his name was, man. I don't... We, we uh we have problems with him, man. He's done. He's gone. You know what I'm saying? We won't see him. I hear from him anymore, so he it's was over. Threatening me. Uh, what, what, what about uh, the sprinkles? Have Have you supplied any sprinkles anywhere? Oh, are you talking about them uh, ice cream fuck faces? Yeah, man, they're going crazy. They keep calling me and demanding me to take a side. I think I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I heard about that shit, but you know, to be honest with you, every single time, you know, I'm taking a walk. And I see that fucking truck, you know, playing that stupid fucking song, man. Oh, you know, God, just yeah. Nightmares. Makes me laugh. Nightmares. Laugh. It's, 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 yeah, it's, they're, they're goofballs, man. They're knuckleheads. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if they, I wonder they're if nothing. they did anything to Tommy Tomato. That's, uh. This is, this is oh, yeah, that. yeah. He's eliminated. He's gone. No more Tommy Tomato. You know what I'm saying? So if. If you had a vote for one uh, video game character to be naked, would it be uh, Kerrigan or uh, Lara, Lara Croft? It'd be Toad. Toad? Toad, you know, from uh, Super Mario. 
You just bring up my wife, Kerrigan. Who is this guy on the phone right over here talking about toad and heroin over here? What? I don't what, know. what the? What is that? Spaceman? What the fuck is that? I don't know what that was. That was that was Rainer. He's a little itchy. What, what's he do? I do everything. I kill the Zika virus. I'll beat your ass, you produce gangsters, loser. I'll get you. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't. He, he cuts in. It's it's radiation. <laughs> He leaks through the walls. Yeah. yeah, that guy sounds like he got problems, man. Do he's I got, need to take him out too? He's if you could take him out, that would be amazing. But I don't think you got a starship big enough for him. He's got a big starship. It's rough. Oh, he's flying around, huh? Yeah, he's. Oh, I see how it. He's uh, he's. Uh, you better not call me a pussy, Nick the Rat. I know where you live. I'll beam you up here right now. Kerrigan is the hottest bitch in the world. I'm cutting this collar off, man. This collar can go some down. Uh, uh, sorry, collar. Uh, you just got cut off, but uh, I guess we could play another song as an interlude to to all of that stuff. Can we? No, we can't play a song. It's not time for a song. It's time for more news. This is uh, the news minute. We got this exciting story that came over the transom. It was, uh, uh where'd the story go? It's... Oh, also, I just want to say, you can call in at uh, 917-719-5923. It's, it's crazy out there. Uh, we got this new story that just seemed really crazy. Let's watch this, and if anybody wants to call in and talk about it, we, we could. A drunken Ohio man was arrested after he tried to self-check out his poop at Kroger. Oh. Colin Murphy was stumbling around the food chain in Hyde Park on Sunday, slurring his speech and... What? You're Reeking of booze. Oh. The debauchery didn't stop once Murphy encountered a store employee. The 23-year-old suspect then allegedly stripped naked in front of the Kroger worker and then pooped on the self-checkout kiosk. Murphy was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct and public indecency and held on a $2,000 bond. Wow. At his arraignment on Monday, the judge ordered him to stay away from the store. Man, that's also from... Uh, uh the Daily News, jeez, they're, they're doing all the good news reporting these days. Um, I know after I have a whole bunch of alcohol, I'm, I'm ready to take a nice poop, too. It's, it runs through you in a weird way, that liquor. It makes you do crazy things. You don't know, you could start doing a radio show if you drink enough alcohol. Uh, but yeah, this guy, uh, these Kroger, I don't even know. I, I'm just kind of happy. I don't think that's in New York. I don't think I've ever seen a Kroger in New York. Where did this take place? Why is New York reporting about... What is what is this Kroger? Cincinnati? Is the Kroger in Cincinnati? Or was it in New York? Was it a guy from... I'm so confused. Why? Hold on one second. Let me look a little bit deeper into this. Yeah, this is... This is not New York news. Why is... Why is the Daily News reporting on this? The New York Daily News is reporting on... Man, we should send this guy over to the Daily News to poop. To poop on... Poop on them. But talking about poop, I got this here rap. That, uh... It's about poop. It's poop rap by Tristan B. Let's play that, and... Then we'll come back, and we'll listen to more voicemail, and have some more fun, everybody. Uh, it's Monday... 613 still. You weren't listening for 24 hours. It's almost 630. Oh, poop rap! Work it, Tristan. Skin is drooping, pooping till the apocalypse, pooping after chocolates, pooping until my butthole's raw and I can't poop no more. Pooping everywhere I go, pooping in the store. Yes, I love all kinds of poop, all types of poop are good. If you have to take a poop, then come poop up in my neighborhood. I love the poops that are long and hard, also the poops that are pellets. Sometimes the poops are wrong and bizarre, and sometimes the poops are hellish. I also like them poops of people. 
call the robo shits I also like pooping into a bowl of piss One day I would like to poop across the land Pooping on command If you think you've seen real poop Then come poop with this man Yo, hey yo Man, I poop so much My shoots is rough And my shoes got crust And I bruise my gut when I cruise the bus I hit you cause I must Pass through the aisle like a turd down the Nile I'm a crocodile when I'm working my style Get hung, get bit, chill for a minute Take a fat ass shit, yo My ass got asthma, I'm lax and tabbed up I smash through fabrics when my doo-doo splats up So I choose the rapper, who could be the poo-poo master Shat the whole bench of the Green Bay Packers Made a splash so big it was raining after Like finding some gold or like taking a poop in the freezing cold A poop to me is the best thing around I poop at night when I can make no sound Sometimes when I poop I will scream and a holler Other times my poop will be significantly smaller My pooping abilities are far and beyond I once took a poop at the side of a pond I have learned the art of pooping Now I must poop If you disrespect me I might poop in your soup Just anywhere that I go I also must poop Sometimes the poops are rock solid, other times the poops are goop. One day I hope to honor the poop with a poop related tattoo. If you love to take a poop, then I love to poop with you. I'm only 81. I got a poop in degree from a school with no pee. My poops is messy, got poop on the seat of my car. VCs fly, I'm a star. I had three wives cause they pooped on my heart. I sold three dimes of my poop in a jar cause it's light. Like a star made from poop that just shines in the night. But it's black like the night. I pooped out a knife. Figure, I even poop out of fright from when my poops isn't right. Man, as a child once pooped on a trike and my parents took it back to the store. I performed rituals where I poop in a skull. I was riding on a boat and I pooped off the hole. Sometimes I time myself pooping. Set records on the bowl. I poop when it's not honorable. I want you to know that I poop on your mom when she wants to get low. Yo. Uh, uh, uh. Wow, everybody. Whoa. That was one of the most intense songs that I've heard in the past 10 years, at least, uh, on planet Earth. I've been around the universe, and that was... I've heard worse outside the solar system, but that really takes the cake for being inside the solar system. I liked it. I don't know about you, but that was Tristan B. with the poop rap. You can't beat the poop rap. That poop rap was super duper crap. Uh... We got, uh, what can we do now? We got a lot of stuff on the plate still. This is, this episode is, it's barely even begun, everybody. I know it's 6.34 in the p.m. on Monday, the 13th of 2016, at a certain time, place, and location on the something. But yeah, uh, uh, let's play, let's play a voicemail. Well, yeah, let's play one. We got voicemails. I can play one of those. Let's do that now. Hello, Nick. Let's be honest here. Uh, You saw the power we had on your last episode. No. We cut that call off. Uh, Don't make us cut off anything else. uh, Give us Larry now. uh, Larry... Stay hidden. Don't come to the sewer, Larry. Never come to New York. Maybe you want to leave America. Oh, fuck. I don't know if you're in America or not. You might want to leave the planet Earth. Maybe you're not here either. But either way, I really hope you don't get caught by those weird people. They sound really horrible. Uh, that phone call would only be made possible with uh, today's sponsors. Today's sponsors did not pay me, but I I have their product. And I guess that's good enough to be a sponsor because 
I'm living off of that, baby. Uh, this one came down through a slot in the sewer late last night. You hear that? You hear... Listen. Guess what it is? I'll give you... Two guesses. Okay, first guess. That's wrong. And the second guess... How'd you guess it? It's a win for life. Oh my god, it's a two dollar win for life scratchy ticket. Oh, Blitz would be so mad at me right now. He would be pissed. But the thing is, this one that came through the sewer was worth four dollars. So there you go, everybody. Ha ha ha. The New York State has now started sponsorship of the Nick the Rat episode with four dollars. Thank you, Commissioner Gordon, for all of your support. Uh, we have an old favorite. I guess we can't even say this is a sponsor. This just is in the plumbing. Old English, everybody. The old 800 brand. They're pumping it directly into the sewer now. It's not even in a plastic bottle. It's in a metal pipe. Metal pipe. Uh, also, also, today's episode, we have a very special... Special sponsorship. This one's a special one. This one's is like an actual audio thing from uh, Little Seizures. Here you go, everybody. It's, uh, the, it's Little Seizures. Listen in. What do you want in an energy weapon? I, I, I want to shoot far. What else do you want? I w- w- want to hit hard. I think I know what you want. PPPC. Little Seizures PPCs. Come on in to Little Seizures and pick up a hot and ready PPC for just three bucks. Or really shake their cockpits with an ER PPC for just five bucks. And when we say bucks, we do of course mean a hundred thousand C-bills. Little Seizures. PPPC. Your enemies aren't gonna like the way they shook. I guarantee it. He guarantees it, folk. That was a uh, little seizures PPCs for your giant mech. Buy them today. Uh, you, you can own noobs from like really far away, like seven, eight hundred meters. Or so you just boo, shoot them in the cockpit, kill that fucking space jockey. You're good to go to get all those sea bills and take over for your clan. You're probably a clone. You filthy clones. You goddamn filthy clones. Uh. I guess other sponsorships would be, uh, we, we, we could talk about uh, Twitter. Yeah, I'm Nick the Rat on Twitter, Facebook. Actually, I'm not on Facebook. Fuck Facebook. And fuck you, too. Those are those two anti-advertisements. Uh, but we could sponsor Hashtag Sewer Chat. Yeah. Today, you and Hashtag Sewer Chat could chat in the sewer virtually. Talk about a sponsorship. That's what you want to hear. You need those in your pipes today, so go check them out. You can check them out at my website, nicktherat.com. Click radio and click chat, and you'll go right into the sewer. You'll be in there with a whole bunch of fine folks. We got Boat. We got Blitzed. We got Haze. We got me. We got Sapphire and Bork. We're all chilling, chilling them in the virtual sewers. Say hi. It's good. You go there and say what's up to everybody. Uh, So those were the sponsorships. I guess that's all the sponsors we got, right? Did anybody send money? Did did Hillary send money? Come on. She said she was going to send money. I'd take money from her for sure. Why not? Um... Oh, we got more news. Let's go some to the uh, the news TV box thing. All right, I guess I should preface the uh, preface what I'm about to get into over here. This kind of kind of hits close to home for me, and it might hit uh, close to your home too. Uh, it's about uh, how do I even start? The subject is so big. I'm about to open up. 22 cans of worms. Maybe just one. Uh, uh, had, let's just play the clip, and then it'll stir my thoughts into the, the, the proper ways of thinking. This is from the Aspen Institute. Hello, I'm Alexander Rebin, and I'm a roboticist and an artist. Um, 
We are increasingly becoming surrounded by connected devices and things that are watching us and measuring. This is 2014. Yeah, it's, I'm going to go on a little rant about marketing and art and people's beliefs about where we're going with technology. Man, AI is never going to be as good as they say it's going to be. You're always going to need a human behind it. I think humans are better than robots. I mean rats. I think rats are better than humans, which are by maybe beneath robots. Maybe this guy has a point. Let's listen in. Us and, ...and all sorts of interesting ways. What if these devices were more curious about us? What if they wanted to find out more about humanity than they did want to find out about raw data? It won't ever happen. They don't what even care about raw data, data you stupid mother... Did wetware. For example, if you're in your home and your uh, robotic pet comes along and asks you a hard question, would you want to answer it? Would you be... Oh, God. This guy makes me want to poke my ears out of my eye holes and through my throat and mouth hole face. Oh, uh, see, well, the problem with life today is marketers, okay? That's, that's probably what it is. It's the marketers. It's a group of people that just try to sell you something and they just start saying shit and it doesn't mean anything but they say it in a way that makes most people agree with them for some reason i don't know why i don't know computers will never be interested in anything never never it won't happen it's a great story it's a great little piece of fiction but i'm sorry there will never be unicorns Okay? Okay, Alexander Rebin, you artist, you. See, I'm on this video from 2014 because I saw a video recently of a guy getting his finger stabbed because he pressed a button that sent electricity through a little robotic arm that sent a needle into his finger. And then he questioned Asimov. A fiction writer. Okay, people, the, the three rules of robotics is a dream. It's a story. Just because he said, oh, if you want robots, they can't hurt humans. That doesn't mean nothing. That's like saying, oh, if you have unicorns, they won't. This is just. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm just. It just not, doesn't. Robots don't have souls, nor will they ever have souls. I'm sorry. Or care or reason to think about why they're here. They don't think. Okay, we don't have to say souls, we could just say think. Anyway, let's listen to Alexander Rebin, the robot artist from 2014. Engaged with it. Imagine you have a question that you want to ask the world. Would you answer such a question? What is the last risk you took? These are the types of questions. All right. Pushed a button on a cardboard piece that had a speaker in it and a pre-recorded sound of a child asking, what's the last risk you took? And then he said, what if a robot asked you this question? Well, a robot's never going to ask you that question. It's never going to happen, Alexander Rubin Rebin. Why do you have money? Who's? Why is the Aspen Institute giving you money to waste people's time? Let's listen in more and stories that we should be collecting and our technology around us can help us do so. Uh -huh. We can turn facts into stories and use devices like this to find out more about humanity. Thank you. You're f***ing welcome. I played you on my show. Uh, so, yeah, let me see if I could find the article that brought me to the sky. Oh, boy. Robot, yeah, this is from the mirror, but I guess this well, I shouldn't even, from 13 June 2016. That was today. All right, so this article came out today. Robot which can choose to harm humans. <clears throat> that, that's wrong right there. The robot didn't choose if it harmed a human. He presses a button that stabs his finger. It's so stupid. Sparks artificial intelligence debate. What, amongst retards, fucking jerk-offs? <sighs> wow, this uh, old English is really kicking in. I'm sorry, people, I'm starting to yell. I'm, if I start selling you seeds or something, please call the police. All right, hold on. 
Yeah, you know, I'm just gonna play the clip. The clip that that they have on the mirror here. You just it's it's. Have you ever seen the box where they put the quarter on top and the little robot kitty comes and takes the fucking quarter and puts it in the box? Yeah. Well, how come that didn't start fucking debates about robots wanting money? Because it's doing it. It's a. <sighs> Presses a button. And a fucking robot arm hits his finger. He says, ah, and he starts bleeding. I wish she put his fucking face in the way so it killed him. That would be cool if he... Maybe that would be a really artistic thing if you had a robot kill you. And then you could put that on the internet and have news people promoting you and making money off... Hi, everybody. This is Nick the Rat. Have a... Have a listen to Late Back Luke. Do the robot. the whole fucking produce section calling up your fucking show over here. You got Tommy Tomato here, and then you got Joey fucking Bologna. It's like a goddamn grocery store. What is this shit? Get the fuck out of here. I'll see you tomorrow at the fucking food cart. <laughs> so 650 Brooklyn, New York
Uh, you shouldn't cut into my show like that, Rainer. Take the rat. Rainer. Uh, that was Do the Robot by Laidback Luke. Thank you, Laidback Luke. You really relaxed me out there over there a little bit. Uh, I might get all uh, crazy again. I might. I don't know. I might. I might not. I got other news. Uh, this news led me down a rabbit hole. I don't know how far deep into the rabbit hole I could get, but... WPBF that news. I'm making science entertaining is something Bill Nye, the science guy, has been doing most of his life. Most of his life until he turned into a fucking nightmare of death and despair, and you're all gonna die because if you don't fucking save the planet, we're all gonna die. This guy died. Bill Nye, science guy. He used to be funny though. And this morning he's honoring some of the best and brightest students. Our nation has to offer. This is exciting. Joining our us nation. National- All right. These are the best and brightest students our nation has to offer. All right, Bill. Introduce them. And what are you doing with these kids? Let's see. Press Club in Washington, D.C. Bill Nye, the science guy, and three of the young inventors, Philip, Reese, and Samantha. Thanks so much for joining us. We really. All right. Throughout this clip, they said they're young inventors. These kids look like they're 15 or something. Nobody says their age or knows their age. They, they fuck it up a lot. Just keep listening. I, I watched this clip. This led me to like five other things. But let's see what Bill's got to say. I appreciate it. Bill, we're going to start with you. Tell us about the Explore Vision program and what it's all about. Yeah. So Explore Vision is a unique science scholarship competition. All right. I didn't remember that part. It's a science scholarship. All right. Remember that. Science is truth, right? Science is real. Okay, so we got a real, we got a scholarship for something. Okay, just as long as you got that in your head. Watch where this goes. Or you have to work in a team. You can't work work by yourself. And you have to come up with an idea for an invention that you think will come into existence in the next 20 years. All right, you have to work on an idea with three other people. For something that might exist in 20 years. Just think about that. Just think about that for a second. Years. It's cool. It's judged by the National it's Science cool. Teachers Association. The other thing that's it's cool. unique about it, it starts in kindergarten. There's four categories. Oh, yeah. kindergarten, we make them stupid school. when they're young. Just think, uh, when we think of science uh, competitions, we think of high school only, but no. No, no. When we think of science competitions, we think about the truth, you Bill Nye the science guy. You go back to go back to TV. Wait, you're doing, t- you're doing reality TV now. You're doing the news, though, man. You're fucking with our kids. You're telling kids to think of inventions that don't exist, and you're going to get paid to do it. You're telling kids in kindergarten that the thing they got to do is think about, no, what do I, why don't we do science that's real? Like, hey, this shit's real. Why are you doing fantasy? They're doing fantasy writing for money for the brightest. Okay, maybe it could be inspirational. Maybe it'll help kids think. But why don't we use what's real instead? This is also sponsored by Toshiba and Bill Gates and this whole other foundation. Anyway, let's go on. Oh, this is, runs the gamut. What's and the, the inventions gamut? these guys come up with are amazing. They're amazing. Okay, There's- Bill, in 20 years from now, we're going to have flying vibrators that shoot lasers and put out fires. Did I win? Did I fucking win the award? <sighs> Some of the inventions you've seen um, this year. Yeah, Bill. Well, uh, what'd you see? There have been the prosthetics. This is another one to uh, help your health. Oh, yeah. And then there's uh, some space assets, 
compet- uh, space assets ideas and uh, and flying dildos prove, and lasers to prove our quality of life through through science. Through he's engine- struggling. He struggled through that sentence. If I wasn't yelling over him and you saw this video. It's ridiculous. When I first saw the video, I was like, oh, okay, what can I hate about this? Because I just naturally hate Bill Nye. But I didn't see it right away. But then after I l- listened to the whole thing, it just re- he's a money-hungry whore. Bill Nye will sell his kids for, for some money. This is all just for money for Bill Nye. Well... This is deeper than that, but he's doing it himself for money. He doesn't even realize he thinks he's doing it in terms of truth. But you could see it in his face that he's coming up with this bullshit and it's hurting him a little bit. I hope it just gets worse and worse and then he breaks like I do. Sorry. Engineering. That's fantastic. So it's, it's really an exciting thing and it's exciting. unusual. It's, it's judged by the National Science Teacher, Teachers Association. Oh. I'm a longtime member and... He's a longtime member and waved to them. They're donating money to the. This, this sounds like a corrupt group. I'll get into it more later. I didn't go too deep. I'm sure this is more. And it's uh, sponsored by Toshiba. And Toshiba's oh. an engineering company that always oh. needs engineers in the pipeline. Yeah, they need so engineers. They need retards to buy their fine cool dildo lasers. This is my 14th year doing this. His 14th year. All right, this is Bill Nye's 14th year. All right, now they're about to introduce kids. And he's not going to know shit about these kids. And then it just gets so bad. So bad. This is what we're doing to our, your youth. We're teaching them that they should like, like thinking fantasy bullshit is good and you'll get paid. And some nerd in a bow tie is going to say that Sheba could sell more computers and he's going to get paid for it. Sorry. Okay, let's go on. Here we go. This is I'll my show 14th year doing this. And tell us about the kids are you guys standing even 14 next to you. Years old? <laughs> we are. Yeah. Yeah. Just barely. They're almost just 17. Barely. All right. She says they're almost 17, and he says they're just barely 14. Bill and I, just, you, you fucking loser, get off the... <sighs> this is called Celebrating Science with Bill Nye. It was published on the 10th, June 2016. He's on News 25. He's going to talk to these kids now that he doesn't know shit about. He's been doing this for 14 years. These kids came up with some bullshit fantasy story that might exist 20 years from now and they got paid money to go to school to do it. He says, oh, you guys aren't even 14. And they say, yeah, we're, we're almost 17, Bill. And then he says, yeah. Not even almost 14, guys. So smart. All right, let's play that again. I'll shut up. Yeah. Just barely. Just barely. Can you tell us a little bit about the kids standing next to Wait, you? Wait, I got to do it again. I got to do it again. And tell us about the kids are you guys standing even 14 next to you. Years old? <laughs> we are. Yeah. Yeah. Just barely. Just barely. Can you tell us a little bit about the kids standing next to you? No, I can't. Well, I'll let them tell you. Okay. Yeah, he can't even do it. Uh, we are. They're unprepared. Uh, from uh, Long Island, Plainview. Uh, New York, and uh, we created this project here for the competition. Kids, uh, that kid was grabbing for him, and Bill Nye's got the smug look on his face. He passed it down to the kids. He doesn't even know who these little fuckers are. And then the kid's like, oh, I wasn't ready for this, Bill. I just, just remember going, Bill, 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 as a kid growing up, and that means science to me now. And now I'm a fucking mutant. <sighs> But he, the kid pulls through it. The kid pulls through it. And he's confused. I don't blame the kids for being confused about what's being pushed on them by these, these miscreant, money-hungry bastards. Kind of a uh, crude prototype here. We, oh, yeah. Our project aims to envision a safer and more effective method of applying uh, modern stem cell research by means of a personalized implant. All right. What they got is a model of a spine... And then some Play-Doh. This kid, to see when I was watching this, when they got to this part, I was like, he's not saying anything. This kid did not say one thing that's going to benefit science at all, other than just catchphrases. This is where the marketing came in and fucked us all up, everybody! We're just saying catchphrases, and that's what we live our life on. So, this kid's got a model of a spine because that's what he wants to fix. And then he's got a, a, some Play-Doh tubes, and 
They're going to stick stem cells in there and make us better. I don't blame the kid for being not doing anything. He's just, he's making money. That kid's got more money than me because of this. <sighs> Here we go. Let's listen more. Which could initiate and regulate uh, stem cell. All right. They show a picture of the... He's with two other girls right now, this kid, that's, that took the question and started talking. There's a picture with the two other girls looking at a piece of metal or something, and they're scratching their chins like they're thinking. The people took a picture of them and told them to pretend like they're thinking, and they did it! My brain hurts so much. Our future, we're, we're doomed already. I guess we're all going to die, right? I guess it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Hold on. Hold on. Hot lunch! Which could initiate and regulate uh, stem cell uh, regeneration in damaged and uh, diseased tissues in the body. So what, you guys are in high school? Yes. yes. What year are you? 11th grade. Yeah. What were you doing when you were in 11th grade? <laughs> Not <laughs> that. Not well. Trying to score on the eight, uh, SAT test. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good save there, buddy. Trying to score on the SAT test. Yeah, nice little pause. I caught it, bro. Pro, I caught it. Bill, you're a cocksucker. And these two newscast people, just the whole media, we're fucked. Who watches TV? I'm shocked and appalled. I feel like I have PST after this clip. All right, let's go back through it. Let's go re- see what... That's great. <laughs> Not that. Well. Trying to score on the eight, uh, SAT test <laughs> yeah, to get right? into college. <laughs> That's really, That's right. really impressed. That's impressive. That's impressed. Um, but the idea is you get the, uh, you get the person's stem cells to be targeted, right? And you- See, look, nobody knows what to say because these kids are talking fantasy. They could be talking about Harry Potter on a fucking hippogriff right now and they'd get money to go to learn science! They took a bunch of words that they don't like and said, we're going to fix that. And they won. They said, they said, we want to help nerves grow back together in a spine. They don't know how to fucking do it. Nobody knows how to do that. If they <sighs> Science. You chose the spine. Yes. So uh, we, we have a spine here because that's an example of uh, what something that covers tissues that generally in an adult human being would not regenerate uh, neurons, yeah, nerve no cells. Fucking shit. So the aim of our project would be to find a way to initiate that regeneration process oh. in someone whose spinal cord might be uh, degenerating due to disease. Alright, so they fucking sat around a table and ate Hot Pockets and they said guess what's bad? People with broken backs is bad. And why is it bad? Because we can't fix it. And then they won a science project for saying this to each other. <sighs> Disease or else injured in, a, in an accident. How yeah. hard could it be? Right. Yeah, Bill. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Impossible. That's impressive. All right. Well, we need more kids like that. Thank you so much for joining us. We need more kids to eat Hot Pockets and talk about people with broken backs and how it's fucking up America or some shit. Oh, God. We're going to lose the next war. Actually, no, we got all the weapons anyway. Congratulations. We'll be looking for those three in the future for Great sure. Great work, guys. Thank yeah. you. We'll be looking for them in the future when we send the Terminator robots to kill them. Holy shit, everybody. Um, you know what that means? That means we got to play. We got to play a song because I'm, I'm, I'm verklempt right now. I can't even take it. Wait, we got a call. We got a call. We need somebody to comment on this. We need them to calm me down. Hello? Maybe they don't want the call to go through. Hello? Caller? Hi. Yes. Hi. Hi, caller. Hi, this is Timothy. Hey, Tim, did you hear any of that bullshit? Well, uh, yeah, but I mean, to be honest with you, I think that Bill Nye is kind of a genius. I think he's going to earn the right to say whatever at this point. Oh my god. Don't, you know what? I'll be, you? I'll be partisan with you. I'll, uh, this is this his bow tie? What 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 strikes you as intelligent with this man? It's just, it 
it's really his, his voice. So when he opens his mouth, you know, he says really intelligent things. I feel like I'm smarter every time I hear him. Well, you should, because Bill Nye sounds like a wannabe Trump. He's got, like, no insults, though. Trump's got, he's got some decent digs. Hillary's, Hillary's got a whole bunch of writers, but Bill Nye, he's, he always tries to call people out, like, hey, buddy, cowabunga dude, science. <sighs> well, I mean, he's, he's a nerd, and the nerds generally don't have sense of humor. It's not really possible, but... You know, I mean, Trump and Hillary, I mean, they're the worst thing since Vietnam. Vietnam was Earth pretty bad, sir. I had they're a- just the worst. Like, they're the worst thing since the Holocaust, I think. Like, why were they even born? I don't know, sir. Well, how about you introduce our next song? It's. I'm going to tell you what to say. Can you say it with me? Sure. All right. The, the name of the band is Cowbell. So say Cowbell. Cowbell. And uh, Science and Technology is the name of the song. Science and Technology is the song. No, you... Oh, God! You... Get off my Fuck phone you. line! I don't... Bill Nike's burning the fire! And I, I'd probably save him. It's Cowbell. Science and Technology. Save our children! Two years. Thank you. So look busy and keep your mouth shut. Okay. When people are first introduced to the next generation science standards, they're stunned. Next silence. generation, I'm sorry, I'm breaking right into that song. So, this Bill Nye thing got me looking. It got me looking, people. Oh boy. So, Toshiba and NTSA, it's some science group, and apparently Archive is with them. Have you heard of next generation science standards? Next? Generation, like Star Trek. That's why it's got to be cool. The kids are going to love it. It's, there is common core for science now. They're getting rid of the scientific method so they can talk about science. They say science is too many facts. And, uh, and now they're lumping evolutionary ooh, evolution evolution deniers with climate deniers they're lumping them together and also I guess flat earthers in there and conspiracy theories why not just clump them all together you just get all your crazies together but listen listen to the marketing that is being sold to our children as truth is squirming in the chair and people start to get wait wait here listen i'll start from the when start people are first introduced to the next generation science standards they're stunned silence and then there's squirming in the chair and people start to get um antsy but in a positive way and no no when i first heard about it i squirm in my chair and i, I shit my pants and then i put it on in a scanner in fucking ohio and new york daily news reported on it and then people respond with oh my gosh this is wonderful. No, this is not. cool. This is great. This is an unprecedented time in education in the United States. It's unprecedented. People, if people like fucking Max Planck and Einstein existed before the year 2016, I think it was already revolutionary. I don't think your marketers could come in and change shit and make it better. I think Teaching facts is the best thing to do. Don't teach kids stories about fantasy, things you can't prove, robots learning and all that big data bullshit and statistics. Statistics are ruining things. Statistically speaking, every fucking statistic doesn't matter and you're going to die anyway. 
standards in themselves, the, the total document, the next generation, has the power to influence all of the components of the education system. <laughs> See, normally we teach out of context. We teach out of context. Normally, we teach out of context. We only have brilliant people like Marie Curie and Nikola Tesla because we taught out of context. <laughs> the teacher is teaching here, the mathematics teacher there, uh, you know, the English teacher over here. And then when it's time to synthesize, guess what? We aren't there. What the fuck did he even just say? People that even know what they're saying is endorsing shit that's going to fuck up our kids even more. Then again, I think all the best students never paid attention in class. <gasps> I just had an epiphany. We're saved, everybody. Think about it. Think about all the great geniuses that ever exist. They were always bad in school. You know why? Because the government can't teach people. They just try to brainwash you to build pyramids. Pyramids, people! <sighs> You know what? I'm done with it. But look into the next generation science shit. Let's continue on with the science and technology. Cowbell. I can't say it was fun. The worst part about surgery is like the worst part about acting. You get up at four in the morning. I went to watch a brain surgery and surgery on an infection in somebody's leg bone. And it's very strange to watch an unconscious person get cut open and dealt with in that way. I had a friend that divorced her surgeon husband and she said that she didn't trust him because he was more comfortable dealing with people when they were unconscious. That's a strange relationship you have with your surgeon. He cuts you open when you're not looking. Apart from the blood and the gore and the knives and things like that, which are things that you would think of off the top of your head, it's a weird psychological place to be. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Jim Rainery here. Uh, I've been fighting the Zika forest for months now. It's been some crazy out there. I thought I wiped it out, but apparently... It's still around. Uh, Nick the Rat had to be put down. He drank too much old English 40 ounces over there. So, in lieu of him talking, you're going to get to hear a little bit of Jim Rayner. And good for you, because the phone number 917-719-5923 is open live. Listen to this here voicemail. Oh, hey, this is uh, Nerd Boner 666. Uh, I'm I'm calling in today because of E3, and I uh, just want to give you a heads up to that Sega has announced that they're actually re releasing a new console to step back into the console wars, and uh, they're calling it the Sega Genesis Isis, and it's uh, it's going to have 800-bit uh, uh, graphics, and uh, it'll, it'll be able to go online uh, through DSL, and uh, it's going to fucking own... Well, uh, apparently, um, Sonic Isis Edition is going to run on the Sega Genesis Isis platform. It's a really great time, everybody. I don't know if you had the Dreamcast. It was it was a decent platform. I remember the the Power Gem fighting game with the things and the who knows and all that. 
I bought it for the Shenmue. I really wanted to buy some Japanese girls' panties from a, a vending machine, but they didn't have that option in the game. I was really let down. I, I sold my, my Dreamcast slightly after that. Uh, but yeah, you know, we still got a, uh, we got more voicemail. We got to go through the list of voicemail before I play this out. Uh, I might want to revive, I might want to revive Nick the Rat because... Kerrigan might kick me out if I don't make money. He sends me a couple, you know, he sends me some space, uh, space ducats every now and then. To, uh, to, you know, bring them to E3 and stuff. That place was crazy. I had to save them from there. There was a whole bunch of people stopping around. They were stinking, man. I smelled them from my spaceship. I beamed him right up out of the, the <laughs> little sucker. Almost got stomped on. Yeah, yeah, nigga rat. Anyway, uh, voicemail number two. Uh, hey, uh, this is Nick the Rat, uh, calling to let you know that, uh, y y there's a new Star Trek VR game, woo coming out next year, Smoke Weed 2020, piece of shit. Holy shit, you're lucky Nick the Rat's passed out right now, because if he heard if there was a Star Trek game coming out right now, you would be all, whoa, uh, he sometimes tries to, like, make me talk like Picard or Riker, but I won't do it for him. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's got some issues anyway. Uh, well, I hope you all enjoyed the show. That was, uh, that was the Nick the Rat episode number 27, I think. I'm, I'm all happy everybody had tuned in over here. This is, uh, pretty crazy stuff going on in the world. We got science and marketing combining at faster rates than ever. At that rate, you're never going to see outer space, folk. You're going to be stuck on Earth. I'm sorry. You're going to... Man, it's it's a really sad state of, uh... It's a sad state out there. But, you know, if you really want to know what's going on, you got to come down to Rat City. Yeah, we're going to play out with this song right here called Rat City by Booyah Bam Boom. Shout out, man, to everybody on Bo Baby Facebook that it told me where Red City is. Bo! Yeah, you know I'm talking about? Uh -huh. Shout out to you. Yeah. Push my. Hey. hey. JC. Hey. Bop. Hey. Bop. Hey. Bop. Hey. Bop. Hey. 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 Hey
Nick to Dino. Yeah. Yeah. That 40 yeah. ounces is strong. Yeah. Oh, see the San Diego. These bitches give me pesos. 721. Oh, New York so. City, everybody. Nick the Rat Radio. So they call it the trap. Fuck the bitch. She caught feelings. Then I beat right back. And if the bitch ain't fucking, then she catching the cab. Rat niggas. I ain't fucking with them. You fuck the home girl. No, I ain't fucking with you. And get your paper up. That shit sleeping. You say you got racks, but I never seen it. I know what I hate. Do you, do you hate Bill Nye? Pathetic morons in my employ stealing my precious well, money. That's why you fired Bill, isn't it? Ham fisted, nearsighted house painter. JC push my beef and silver back. Hey, I'll fuck a rack and shit, she'll get a cat. She a nasty whore, so I can call her that. I will just rather take her money, you can buy her you back. Can have Cause I just push her to the side with all the mother rats. The right way I catch a rat if I set a trap. So try and hurt this nigga, this is a fucking rat. Rat city bitches, rat, rat city bitches. I'm from the bay, so you know we got them bopping bitches. Been all around every hood the same, but ain't nothing like this Jerry game. At the board, I'm looking for a chance. Had to call her out of her cause here came a rat. Booyah! Bamboo! That's really the name of this group. I thought Rainer was just fucking. Red city bitch, red, red city bitch. Every town you can find your red team. She a flipper like she playing for the Dolphins. She running back like she playing for the Dolphins. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, I'll probably be around uh, next week if I don't get eaten by a bear when I go camping in the middle of nowhere. Oh, boy. Hello, mate. Yeah, I was out in the bush the other weekend. I saw this bright light in the sky, right, mate? Yeah, and all my roos got out inside the back of a wanker. He's just fucking trying to beat on a... Uh, uh... Oh, just joke with you, nigga. There's no lights of roos out there. Oh, mate, I have a good one there. Oh.